Well, hello, people. Batman Mark here for ToyHypeUSA.com and ActionFigureCollectorsNews.com. Action Figure Collectors and Toy Hype USA can be found on the web. Check us out. If you can't find us on the web, you can always look for the links on our CollectSomething.com Facebook page. So we're going to break this puppy open here so we can show everybody the newest acquisition for the Bat Cave. I got myself here the Bradford Exchanges Limited Edition wall clock of the 1966 TV show Batmobile. Something they offered about six months ago. I don't even remember where the heck I got the ad, but somehow it popped up either in my inbox or one of those... Uh, bot responses because they know I collect Batman and all my eBay searches and Amazon searches just meta tagging me all the way through till this showed up in my inbox some day and uh, let's get to it. So I took the liberty of taking it out of the cardboard box which is basically just a generic cardboard box that it came wrapped in. Pretty heavy too. I was kind of surprised at it but as you can see Bradford Exchange Sucker, oh, let's get focused in there. Bradford Exchange, anyway, and uh, right on top of the box here, we can see the instruction booklet. Uh, being as how I don't need no stinking instructions, I'm gonna just pop this puppy open and we're gonna go for it, let's see what it is. All right. As we take this off, okay, you can see here that I'm exposing the clock. This is a wall clock. It's supposed to represent one of the old style cuckoo clocks. If you guys can see that, focus in on that puppy. It's a really nice piece. That is absolutely beautiful. It uh, feels like it's resin almost. Yep, that's resin or plastic. No, that's resin. It's a heavy-duty resin. It's got a plastic canopy for the front. You've got Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and Robin sitting in the center of the dial of the clock face. And uh, let's see if we can turn this puppy here a little bit. Let's see a little bit more detail on it. Center that up for you. Some fingerprints on people who put this sucker in the box. It's got on the bottom, you can see, looks like two uh, weighted, uh, I forgot what they're called, but the, the weights basically, yes, they're weights. And those weights are used to uh, balance the clock timing mechanisms. Do not know if they are actually working order or if this is one of those newfangled clocks where the batteries are required. And it just looks like a antique cuckoo clock. I did see another piece here, so if you'll bear with me a second, we're gonna zoom back out. I'm gonna flip this over here. Uh, see below for accessory. I'm going to take that off, put that over here. Oh, look at that, the pendulum. Oh, I remember now. Very cool. So this is the bat pendulum. It's supposed to go, I guess, somehow behind it. Turn it over. Looks like it's uh, got a little bit of weighted brass panel in the back. There's your 66 TV show Bat Emblem. It used to spin you out or spin you into the different scenes on the show. <sighs> A little dusty there, but very cool nonetheless. All right, let's see if we can get this puppy open. Leave this right here for now. We'll try to attach it later. And pull this back open again. Together. Let me 
some dandy scissors. Okay. So get that piece out of the way. Be careful with that pendulum. Yeah. Brought the ruler out so we could give it a good measure and see what this thing is. I don't remember what they claimed it to be size-wise, but I'm sure we're going to give it a measure anyway. So the clock itself, from stem to stern, is about 15, 15 and a quarter inches. Probably 16 when you take it out. Let's get this puppy out. And the two weights. Gear weights. Okay. Wow. Hefty weight, folks. This thing is one solid piece. So, look at it here. You can take a look at the detail of it all. Just going to ride that all the way up. Very cool. And it's got the slanted nose, so I guess when it hangs on the wall, it looks as if it's riding down this, the wall of your house or office, wherever you're going to hang this thing. Okay, so we, we learned that the weights are in fact just for show. Just right there. They got two little eye bolts holding them in, as you can see. Screwed into the porcelain. There's an open mouthpiece here. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's all open for inside. I guess for the chimes. You can see the canopy is uh, made out of hard plastic. See-through. You can actually see through it. Not very clearly, of course. Distorted vision, but hey. And uh, nice detail on the five-spoked rim. The old Kreger-style rims, as you can see. And it does have the bat emblem in it, in the center. Very cool. It's got uh, some pretty cool tail lights action going on back here. So we're going to turn it around a little and show you the tail action. Whoop! Bang the camera, why don't you? So it's got the parachute packs on each side of the exhaust flamethrower out the back. You can see that detail wise. Really nice. It's got extended tail lights, which gives it that action driving feel. So it probably looks like it's got LED lights in them. Very cool. As we come around to the other side of the Batmobile, same five spoked Kreger style rims with the red bat emblem. And it's got, if you notice here, two round buttons and an on off switch. Not sure what they're for yet. We haven't read the instructions. Remember, guys, we don't need no stinking instructions. But I'm guessing one of these is an on-off switch. One of them works the lights. Maybe that runs the time. I guess it looks like a dial. Um, some, it spins. Maybe that's the volume control for the chimes. We don't know yet because we didn't read the instructions. Really nice feature. It's got the 66 Batman emblem from the TV show. There's another hard lacquered piece going on top of the hood of the Batmobile there. It looks like these are almost see-through. So there might be some lighting in there. We don't know yet. We'll find out in a little bit. But right now I'm going to turn this puppy over and see what it says. Very carefully now, Batman. Very carefully. Okay, here we go. Bradford Exchange logo. All right. And then handwritten. If you can see the marker. In indelible marker. Serial number or I guess piece number. A05. Can't make out if that's an 8 or a 0. And then number 8 on the, again. So it looks like it's uh, 0588 eight, or 05. Zero 08. Anyway, as you can read here, it says Batman Batmobile Cuckoo Clock, which is produced in an edition limited to the maximum of 295 casting days 
and crafted to exactly exacting standards of the Bradford Exchange. All right, which means it's made and licensed through somebody else for Bradford Exchange. Don't know who, because it doesn't say. But of course, there's your Warner Brothers Indicia down at the bottom, showing that it is a DC licensed product. And that was authorized in 2017 by that S17. Okay, that lets you know that's when it was manufactured. Okay, we've got four little tabs here, which you have to turn down or up, as the case may be, to open up the back panel. And there's a finger hole right here. Okay, wow. This thing is really heavy, folks. I'm telling you, it's got to be at least five pounds. Put that down. And inside you have, of course, some more modern tech mechanism style. Looks like you got a little voice box up in here. It's probably for the chimes. You got a battery case for the clock face itself. Your standard good old spin on dial here, which also spins the face. Time. You can check that out. Going backwards in time. Wish I could go back to 1966 again. Go forward in time. Okay. Back to 2017. Anyway, turn this puppy over. Man, it's heavy as hell. I can't impress upon you guys how heavy this friggin' thing is. They've got already established hanging bracket with two Phillips head screwdriver uh, screws fit into it to hold that up. I'm telling you, this thing is heavy. You got to get yourself one of those wall hanging mounts that's got to hold at least 15 pounds just to be safe because this sucker's weighted. Anyway, so it says here, three AAA batteries. And of course, you know, you're going to need one AA battery for the clock itself. So that must be for the chimes. I'm going to set this puppy down. Oh, here we go. That must be where the pendulum goes. Get the pendulum swinging. You can see in there, a little space where it would hook in. So that's what that hole is for down here on the inside. You can see where my finger is running in through that. Okay. And we're going to set this puppy down. Man, heavy, heavy, heavy. Solid. Looks like a little lacquer got chipped over here before packing it. Side, turn this upside down to the right side so we don't do any damage to it while we're trying to fix this here. Pull the weights out. I don't want to break those tablets off. Okay. So, time for the battery pack. First thing you got to do is get yourself a small Phillips screwdriver. Get on in here and unscrew this case before I put the batteries in. Three triple A's, which I had pulled out a bunch of batteries just in case because I wasn't sure how many or what I, what sizes I need. Oh, something went on already. Two of them control the speaker. You hear that automatically when I kick on. That must be for the pendulum because it just jumped into a higher rev. And you put in the third battery, which means I must have the sucker turned on still. And now it's off. See, that's what that battery, that switch is for on the side here. All right, now that it's off, drop the clock battery in. Pick this puppy up. And let's get it working. Come over here to the switch. When you flip this switch, you actually hear the speaker go on. Let's see what happens. Is there a way to get it to chime? Let's see. Push this button and what happens? <laughs> so imagine this puppy hanging on your wall and at the stroke of each hour, that's going off.
Very cool. Very cool. Now I gotta see when we attach the pendulum if it actually swings. I should set the time back to 12. Just so we can see. Oh, there it goes. Every time you move it. So it plays, you can hear it. Yeah, that's on for sure, it's by the switches. This one, I guess is for the pendulum. Being that it turns, I'm guessing. Oh, that's the volume control, let's see. Let's try that again, okay. Let's get that to chime. Let's turn the knob. Hey, what happened? Lower. Well, that's as high as it goes, folks. Turning it down. So there's your volume control right there. All right. Let's see if we can get this pendulum on. Let's see how that puppy's gonna sit. Okay, guys. So here's the pendulum. Okay. I'm gonna take it and slide it up into bottom and connect it to where it belongs and turn it around again I don't know if you guys can see that well and the pendulum is swinging it's not quite swinging yet So, I'm going to have to really hang the sucker on the wall to get it to do right. Let's see. If you push this button again, watch the lights light up. Oh, not working. Okay, let's spin the dial. Get that working again. There it goes, folks. It works. One hell of a piece. Put this puppy down. You know what? We're going to have to take that pendulum off because I'm telling you, the freaking thing is heavy. Can't impress upon you how freaking heavy this thing is. It is one heavy sucker. You know what? I'm going to turn this puppy off. Off. Because that whining is annoying me. I think that's one of the things I'm going to most <clears throat> hate about it. Is that the whining of the speaker box is going to continually persist if you leave the volume on. If you leave battery in for the speaker to work. I'm taking out these batteries now. Just can close this puppy up. Okay, well, one's not coming out so easy. I'm just gonna sell this puppy right back in here for a second. And uh, just tell you a little bit more. So this item goes for about, I wanna say 250 bucks. Expensive as hell, heavy as hell, and uh, limited edition. I don't know how many of them are actually made, 
based on what they're telling us. Of course, they say they had a production not to exceed more than 295 casting days, which means they could have done 10 castings per day, or they could have done 50 castings per day in a period of 295 days. So no clue as to how many pieces are actually out there. But mine is numbered 500 and something. So we know at least there's 500 of them out there, 588, if we're reading those numbers correct. But uh, let me know what you think, guys. Leave some comments below. Check it out. And uh, keep following us, www.toyhypeusa.com and www.actionfigurecollectors.com. Keep uh, checking back and go to our Facebook page, collectsomething.com on Facebook, and you can catch all these beautiful, wonderful new items that are coming out, and we'll post more videos for you. All right, guys, Batman Mark out. Have a fantastic day.